Docker Scan is out and Docker Scout is in. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive. Today I want to talk about a new feature that Docker released a couple months ago called Docker Scout. Docker Scout is a tool to help you build more secure Docker images by scanning them layer by layer, analyzing against known vulnerabilities, and providing recommendations on how to remediate any issues. Docker Scout is built into Docker Desktop since version 4.17 and is still in early access. Docker Scout replaces and enhances the previous Docker Scan command, which is now deprecated. I'll also note that there's a number of container security tools, such as Trivi, Snick, and Gripe, which provide similar functionality. Covering those is out of scope for this video, but I wanted to mention them for completeness. Okay, let's explore the various ways you can use Docker Scout. The first way that we can interact with Docker Scout is via our command line. So I've got a terminal up here. First, you'll want to check that you have a, an up-to-date Docker version. So I'll do Docker version. As you can see, I'm on version 4.19. Uh, Docker Scout has been in the CLI since version 4.17. So I'm good to go here. And then previously, you would have done something like Docker, scan, and then you type the image name and tag. Now, however, the Docker command will be Docker Scout and then the subcommand, and then our image name. So like with any Docker command, we can issue the uh, help option to get more information. So I can do docker scout dash dash help. And we can see there are these five subcommands. The two that I'm gonna look at are CVEs and recommendations. Uh, and so we will pick an image and run docker scout CVEs on that image and see what the output looks like. So let me do it for the node 20.0.0 bullseye image. So if I run this, if I don't have that image on my system, it will pull that from Docker Hub or whatever registry it's stored in. It then indexes all the packages within that image, and then it will output all the vulnerabilities that, we, that it finds. Uh, so in this case, it detected 38 total vulnerable packages with 116 vulnerabilities, uh, and we can see there is one at the high level and two at the low level. It provides us the official name of the vulnerability as well as a link. We can go onto dso.docker.com and see what this vulnerability is all about. So let me navigate to that particular vulnerability. Uh, and as you can see, this is a vulnerability with OpenSSL impacting Alpine, Debian, a number of different uh, distributions. This dso.docker.com is a database of known vulnerabilities maintained by Docker. And so you get that nice integrated experience between this tool and the site containing all the additional information. Now, what can we actually do about these vulnerabilities? Let's take a look at the recommendations subcommand to see what Docker Scout would recommend if we had been using this as our base image. Uh, in this case, I have a super simple Docker file here that uses that node 20 bullseye image as the base image, and then just sets a command. So let's build this image and then run that recommendations command to see what it would suggest we do. So we can do docker build dash T, give it a tag, specify my current directory as the build context. Okay, with that built, I can now do docker scout recommendations, sample image. And so here we can see the output of that recommendation subcommand. Uh, it's detecting that the base image uh, for that node.js image is this build pack dependencies bullseye, uh, this build pack dependencies bullseye image. And it is telling us that their suggestion is to update to a newer version of that base image. And so we can see that the base image we're using has this particular uh, SHA-256 hash. Uh, presumably, yeah, so this was pushed one month ago. Uh, if we updated using the same tag, we would get the latest version, which was pushed two weeks ago. However, interestingly, it actually appears that this would increase the number of vulnerabilities within our image, presumably because some package within the newer version was updated and that newer version has a known vulnerability. Uh, so this, I would say this recommendations 
subcommand maybe could use a little bit of work. The output is a bit confusing to me. Uh, and we can see here that interestingly, it's suggesting we upgrade to a newer version with a higher number of vulnerabilities. So that's the command line interface to work with Docker Scout. We can also use the Docker Desktop uh, graphical user interface. And so if we open up Docker Desktop, the dashboard, we can see uh, all the various options we have here. Under images, let's go look at that sample image that I just built. If I click into it, we can see all the base images going all the way back to that initial base image of Debian 11.7. And we can see all of the layers that have been added as we've built up this image from that base. On the right here though, this is where we're getting that advanced image analysis from Docker Scout. Uh, and it's summarizing the same stuff we saw in the command line, uh, but putting it here in this nice GUI. So we can see that one high level vulnerability, uh, the handful of medium level vulnerabilities, and then all of the remaining vulnerabilities as well. If we filter on fixable, this, is, this will then show us only the packages for which there is a known fix that we can upgrade to. Uh, and so this makes the output much more actionable. We can also see all of the packages that are installed and a summary of the base images that this is built from. Now, while it's nice to be able to do a one-off command to scan an image or see those results within the GUI, realistically, within our development workflow, we want these scans to be happening automatically every time we build a new image. Uh, and those images are generally gonna be built in some sort of continuous integration system. Docker has provided an official action for GitHub Actions uh, here under the Docker organization. It's called Scout Action to utilize Scout within GitHub Actions very easily. The usage here is quite simple. So within your GitHub Actions workflow, we have our general setup things. We're setting up, we're checking out our code. We're using build X to build the actual image. And then here we get to the Docker Scout specific portion. In this case, we're running whenever, we're running on every pull request event we're using the compare subcommand. This image here is getting information from a previous step, which defined the tags associated with the image we just built. And then we're gonna compare that to uh, a tag called edge, which you could specify this as whatever you want, but perhaps this is the version you have deployed and you wanna see the comparison. You wanna see the number of vulnerabilities in the currently deployed version versus the version you just built. And in this case, we only want to report critical and high vulnerabilities. So this official action makes it very easy to leverage Docker Scout within a GitHub Action workflow. And you could similarly implement something like this in any of the other continuous integration pipeline tools. The final way that you would utilize or interact with Docker Scout is via Docker Hub. Now, unfortunately, I just have a personal plan on Docker Hub. I don't have the business or pro or team subscription, so I can't show you what that looks like, but uh, I believe you, under one of your image pages, you would have an additional, a panel showing the security of the image based on the image scan output of Docker Scout. Uh, and the neat thing about that is that it will continue to update based on changes to the vulnerability database without needing a rescan of the image because of how it's indexing uh, the packages within that image. And so if you are using Docker Hub in a professional or team capacity, that's one more way with which you can see the output of this tool. Now, before I finish, I do wanna call out that there are a few limitations of image scanning tools like this. There's this wonderful talk uh, from KubeCon Europe 2023, looking at these limitations, and they use a number of tricks to scan the same, essentially the same container image containing the same packages in a number of different ways such that they're able to hide those potential vulnerabilities from the scanners. And they point out that these scanners depend on a number of specific metadata that live within your image, uh, namely the OS packaging information, the dependency file. So if you're building, let's say a Node.js app, that package.json or package.lock.json uh, file, and some languages allow you to have uh, additional metadata associated with your binaries that you're building that contain information about the software within them. And so by modifying these and tweaking these, they're able to go from this huge number of vulnerabilities in their test image down to 
all of these scanners showing no vulnerabilities at all uh, by making those specific tweaks. I highly recommend checking out this talk. I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you wanna go check it out. Uh, but I just wanted to call out a limitation of this type of scanning. And so it is important and it is valuable to do. However, there are ways around it. And so take that into consideration as you're building out your security practices. Hopefully this overview helped you to understand more about how to use Docker Scout to build more secure container images and generally how container image scanning works. If you wanna dive deep into Docker and containers, check out this comprehensive course I released that will help you level up your Docker skills. That's it for today. And remember, just keep building.